So now we're using a Schmidt trigger knot gate. There's six of them on this uh, 74 HC 14 right there. We're just using the bottom right one. We tied the inputs of all the ones we're not using the positive supply to uh, disable them for the most part. So in any case, we have the output. So the output is actually charging the capacitor when it uh, sets the output high. When the capacitor gets a high enough voltage to the top of the hysteresis range, that flips the output low. Then the output discharges the capacitor until the capacitor voltage gets to the lower threshold voltage then it has a low enough voltage to flip the output high it starts charging again and uh, so on so the uh, blue led we have the anode to the positive supply so it lights up when the output's low we can see when the capacitor is discharging and then the uh, red led the cathode's headed to ground it lights up when the output is high which is when the capacitor is charging so now this is the schematic diagram for our uh, not gate Schmidt trigger that is A stable. The LEDs alternate right there. So here's the true table with the not gate. When the input's high, the output's low. When the input's low, the output's high. Pretty straightforward. A low output blue LED lights up. A high output red LED lights up. So we have our not gate here, but it's a Schmidt trigger not gate. So it's not right in the middle where it's high and low. So to begin with, we'll say the capacitor is charging. It gets up to that higher hysteresis range, has a high enough voltage to set the output low. So when the output's low, then the capacitor discharges until it gets down to the lower threshold. And when it's got a low enough uh, voltage, then that sets the output high and the capacitor starts charging again. Uh, with this timing that we got uh, right here, we have a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 10K charge discharge resistor and uh, of course we can't have a load too big.